guys, how's it going? Today I'm working on these two big containers that we have right in the entrance of our property. I'm gonna clean out the super tunias that have been growing there this summer, and I'm gonna be taking the evergreens out as well, and I'll kind of explain the process, and then I'm gonna be starting my winter arrangements. Not finishing it today, because we're still a little early yet, but I wanna get the centerpiece in place. So this is the state of the containers at this point. We're pretty much at Halloween, I think tomorrow. Is Halloween tomorrow? Anyway, End of October, still a little bit of color on the Supertunia Bordeaux. Honestly, there would probably be more, but we had the water, water shed off up here. We had all the water drained out of our lines a week ago, and I haven't hauled any water up here. I'm surprised the foliage hasn't wilted down. And here's the other one looking a little bit rough, but the evergreens still look really good. So in the center of each one of these containers, I used an emerald green Arborvita which they did really well. I did have to replace that one one time. I didn't have an emitter run to it, so that was my fault. This one has done great. So the arbs are gonna come out and they're gonna go live at my brother and sister-in-law's house because they've got a place for them uh, and they wouldn't survive in these containers unless I committed to bringing water out here every day because I can't have the water on throughout the winter. And I did that already one time and it turned into this huge chore and it was only when there was one pot up here. So the previous owners left this little concrete container up here. I put a boxwood in it just for the time being and then I ended up watering it through the winter and I just did not like it and it would be, you know, times two with these two containers up here. So I just thought, you know what, I need to stop putting stuff in here to try to overwinter them up front anyway. I can do that closer to the house where I know that it's easier to take care of them. Um, so anyway, I think it's just a good idea to get them out of these containers and in the ground somewhere. And then I can start in with some branches and things like that. So first thing up is to clean out the um, super tunias and evergreens. We've got a really pretty sky today and only a high of 59. It's beautiful out. I see you, Russell. What are you doing, kitty? Enjoying the sunshine. Hi, buddy. You're a good boy. I got all the plants out and I went ahead and in the center here, I put a cinder block where the root ball of the arb was and this is gonna help anchor our centerpiece. It'll all make sense here in just a little bit. So this is just an old cinder block we had behind our barn. And then you can see that their drip system, like the drip tubing that I had running in here, I just went ahead and kind of weaved it around. That'll stay in the pot for the winter. Let's go take a look at the other side. Same story, cinder block, drip system. Uh, now I need to go grab something to clean the pots and then I need to start working on the branches that I'm gonna be putting in the center of the containers. Also, here are the arborvitas I took out of the pots. Um, one of them had rooted in pretty good. You can see right here, it's like got an offshoot root ball to the side of its main root ball here. And that is the new one I had just planted a little bit later in the season and it hadn't rooted out very much at all. So I'm actually just gonna throw these in a couple of bags, like just plastic bags, so that they can be transported to their new home. is taken care of so they are ready to go to their new homes so the next step of this project other than cleaning the pots is to cut a couple branches out of this globe willow tree um, so this globe willow is actually being removed next week um, it along with its twin that was next to it uh, haven't been the healthiest of trees since we moved in they're very prone to borers in fact the one that we've already had 
removed blew almost blew over in a windstorm and this one would do that eventually if I left it there so I decided to get those removed and put in trees that are resistant to insects and disease in our area that way I don't have to be applying chemicals and things when I don't need to be you know I've got uh, weeping willows here I've got one two three of them in our garden that I love and I will um, treat them responsibly but I will still treat them because I'm willing to I love those trees but anything else that I can um, replace with something stronger more resistant to things I will do that and I feel like everybody like I don't know I hate to even defend myself because I feel like everybody should be able to move things around in their own garden how they see fit whether that means removing a tree or not um, because you should like your garden the way it is but I feel like it's actually more responsible of me of people <laughs> to remove things that would otherwise need to be treated with chemicals so Anyway, that's my spiel on that. I didn't even intend to say anything about that. Anyway, so I'm gonna be actually utilizing the branches of this tree. It's not going to waste. In fact, I'm gonna come out here later as soon as I'm done with this project and I will cut most of the other smaller branches because I wanna do some fencing projects with them. So anyway, I'm gonna grab some branches quick. So I've got all the branches right there and I did go ahead and clean them up so there aren't any leaves left on them. So now I need to figure out how big I want my arrangement to be. I'm planning on putting a big bunch of branches in the center. I'm going to string them up with lights first, but I wanna get them cut proper before I start the light process. These are the square estate planters from Crescent Garden. And while they are huge pots, the soil reservoir is actually not that deep. So it maybe comes, oh, I don't know, maybe like halfway down. And that was the purpose of the cinder block because I knew I wasn't gonna have enough soil to hold up a really heavy, tall branch. So it may be that I might have to add more cinder blocks. We'll just have to see. So this part, I'm just gonna be like trying out the branches in these pots, probably cutting them down to size, kind of figuring out what the I want the bunches to look like. Um, and then I'm gonna go grab some of Aaron's lights. <laughs> So this is what I've got so far and I am loving it. I really want it to make a big impact this year. I want it to be something tall and just something really full. So I do need to amp the whole bouquet up with some more branches, especially, you know, some like around the base here. But I just wanted to get an idea of the overall height. And you can see that I think pretty well, especially like from this angle. See, I need to kind of beef it up, especially looking at it from here. Uh, but this cinder block worked as an excellent frog. So what I had to do, I just set the cinder block on top of the soil. I went ahead and like dug out just by hand. I just took handfuls of soil out as deep as I could reach and then just slid the branches down in. And then when I've got it all exactly how I want it, I'll take some of this extra soil and pack it in as tightly as I can here. But I think it's going to hold up in the wind. I think that that cinder block, like the combination of that with the soil, you know, and the little bit of reservoir that we've got there. I think it's gonna work perfect. I'm so excited. I think I've got the branches done and I really like how they turned out. So it is quite sunny, so I hope you're able to see, you know, fairly well what these are gonna look like. Um, now, I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and clean the pots. I kind of held off on that um, until I was done with this step because I didn't know how messy it was gonna get. Um, you can see that the cinder block worked really, really well as a frog. And then like with any extra end pieces that I had, I just shoved them into any extra space. So like these, all these branches are really quite tight in there and I don't think there's any way that they can get messed up. 
I don't think anyway. So I'm gonna go grab the cleaning supplies really quick so we can get at least that part done. And then I think I'm gonna hold off on the lights until tomorrow morning. Um, I need to talk to Aaron about what his scheme is out here. I know he's got kind of a plan of what he wants, like what colors he wants to wear and stuff. So I'll coordinate with him. And then I do need to decide if I wanna use just regular Christmas lights or fairy lights. Um, the reason why I wonder is because those willow branches are quite delicate, especially when you get toward the tips of them. So if I'm wrapping those lights up toward the top and then twisting them and coming back down, that's kind of a lot of pressure and weight on those little brittle stems. So I might opt for the fairy lights because they are lighter, like lighter weight and a little bit easier to manipulate around the branches. So I'm just gonna think on that for a little while. The pots are clean and they look so much better. So that's where I'm gonna stop the project tonight and that'll give me a little time to decide on what I wanna do for lights. It might end up being that I just put a spotlight on the arrangements, like from the ground shooting up at the branches or like in the pot shooting up through the branches. I'm not really sure if I would have used a different type of tree or branch, like typically we'll go up to the hills and cut alder or poplar or whatever's really thick, we'll kind of go in and thin it out and use those branches. Uh, they're a lot sturdier and they can handle lights, but these are so tender that it's, I don't know. I mean, I might try it and see if it works and then continue if it does. I'm not really sure. Um, I just wanted to make sure to utilize these willow branches because I don't know, they're there, they're free, the tree's going anyway, um, so I thought it would be a good thing to do. So anyway, we'll pick this project back up in the morning. I've gotta go put all of my stuff away. All right, so it's been actually a few days because I did decide to go with fairy lights rather than traditional Christmas lights because I think the traditional ones would have been a little bit too heavy and would have eventually like snapped the ends of the branches. And I think that those beautiful yellow branches would have been kind of marred. Like it would have taken a little bit away from, from them to see the green wires twisting up. Um, so these fairy lights, I actually got them from Gardener Supply. So I had to order them, that's why it's a few days later. Um, they are on copper wire. So I don't think we're gonna even see them once they're on the branches. So let me open the box up, we'll see what we got. Micro LED, there are several boxes in here. So these are 19.7 foot micro LED string lights, um, rated for both indoor and outdoor in warm white. So that's what they look like right there on copper wire, and you can see all the little warm white light bulbs along the strings there. And then I did opt for the plug-in option. So they do have these lights available in battery option as well, which is really great for areas where you don't have a, a way to like plug them in easily, um, which I have used. I've used battery operated stuff before, um, but we do have electricity out there by those big pots. So I have a plug-in uh, right behind each pot. So I went with the plug-in type because I know I won't have any issues with them um, when it gets really cold. And before with my other battery pack lights, and I've not tried these ones, so I don't know if it's the same, um, like it would work the same, but it seems like batteries just don't operate very well when it gets below zero degrees, which you know, you can't really blame them. But I have uh, battery operated LED lights for the downtown city pots. And they always do weird stuff. Like they last for December and then it seems like when we get into January when it gets really frigid here, they just like start to blink and turn off and on at weird times. And um, anyway, so I just opted for plug-in because I've got the plugins nearby. Anyway, I already loaded up the step ladder in the cart and I've got the lights in here. So let's head up there and start in. I got the first one done and I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but I thought I'd try to show you. So there's the end of the cord and then just kind of all the excess. The actual lights start right here, which uh, in hindsight, I'm gonna probably start the next one a little higher because I'm gonna have so many greens in here that it'll probably cover up about to here. <laughs> here comes Russell. So yeah, I think it's a waste to use lights down too low, um, but I did start that one there and then I just twisted it up the branch. I don't know if you can see, but it goes all the way to the top 
and then I kind of twisted it back down and then just popped over to a second branch. So that one uh, strand did two branches, two like really tall branches. So this one right here all the way to the top and that one right there. So I'm just gonna sporadically put the lights in here, um, here and there on branches that I think are like the most key to the shape and hopefully seven boxes will be enough. And I don't really think we're gonna be able to tell much until it's dark tonight. So I'll probably just keep on working on this and then we'll kind of do a reveal when it gets darker. One side is done and can you even tell? Isn't that amazing? I love the copper wire with these branches. And so check this out. See how little this branch is right here like compared to my hand? There's no way I could have used traditional lights like this on this sort of branch. So this is gonna be a little bit of a test because when you're putting up lights when it's bright outside, you can't really see how it looks. So I tried to disperse them out evenly so that I'd have a nice kind of bouquet look in the end, but I might have to do some adjusting once we see it in the dark. But I did wanna show you my uh, plug-in setup here. So here are all of the plugins. There are seven of them total right there. And these are all LEDs, so I'm not worried about overloading anything. Um, I bought one of these. Um, this is a five outlet. This is the biggest one I could find. So I'm planning on actually putting a splitter in one of them and then I can fit all seven. So I'm gonna come from the plug-in with a black extension cord up into the pot and then I will work on getting them all plugged in. So let me do that quick and I will show you what it looks like. It's gonna probably kind of look like a mess. Oh my word. The lengths we will go to make something <laughs> work but it did work so I have the three-way splitter here these barely fit with each other but I got all seven of them plugged in keep in mind I'm going to be pushing greens in all around here you will not be able to see this in the end but all of these things are rated for outdoors so we should be okay although I might um, cover this little section up with plastic I might go ahead and cover the whole thing in plastic just to be okay like to be safe it went really well I'm really excited to see what it looks like in the dark now I need to do the second container and we'll come back and show you what it looks like in the end all right guys it's dusk we will try to get some pictures when it's really dark outside um, so that you can kind of see the impact that's going on here these lights are so bright I thought being fairy lights that they were gonna be a little bit on the dim side and I was gonna need to really pack the pots full. That's why I got so many strands. But look at these. Like, I don't know if you can see the one right behind me. It's a little bit bright yet. Uh, but they are just so amazing. So excited. And this is only phase one of the project. So this is kind of like just getting the centerpiece done and then in a week or two here, I'll come in with some big pine and fir branches about this tall probably and I'll just pack it out and berry filled branches and it'll look very, very holiday. I think it's gonna be so fun. And then Aaron has been working really hard on the lights already. Um, he is going to have white lights on the fence line and the interior as well. The whole house already has lights and he's working on this. Isn't that gonna be gorgeous? This all lit and I think there will also be white lights on the fence here all the way wrapping to this pot. I also didn't mention that between the time I got the branches set uh, and I got the lights on so I think there was like what four or five day span there we had a horrible windstorm. It blew so hard and these sticks these branches did not move at all. I am so thankful for that. I mean, I just think it's going to be the perfect winter display. So anyway, that's it for this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process of how I start one of these projects and the experiments. Like, I didn't know if the cinder block was going to work and it works beautifully. So that's something I can kind of like carry forward into other arrangements that I'm doing. Uh, anyway, thank you guys again. We will see you in the next video. Bye.